Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon is a beat-em-up that was developed by Lightweight Co, published by Ubisoft and released on the PS2 and Xbox in October of 2003. During its release, this game scored pretty low with most critics, as reviews came in at around 4 to 6 out of 10, and I'm willing to bet that it didn't sell too many copies either. Based on the award-winning martial arts drama, this game sort of follows the story of the film, but skips over a lot of the plot points and mainly focuses on the bits of action where numerous characters are scrapping over the legendary sword known as Green Destiny. The film covers many themes such as love and betrayal, but in 2003 video games didn't have much interest for that kind of stuff, so they took one of China's most successful movies and cut out all the serious stuff and made a beat-em-up. There are parts of the story that are told in scrolling text before missions to try and add context, but these short and vague intros don't really add to your enjoyment of the game. Broken up into three different sections, this game is played from multiple perspectives as you get to control the movie's three main characters, and I'll do my best not to butcher these names here. Li Mu Bei, played by Chao Yun Fat, Yu Shu Lin, played by Michelle Yeoh, and Jen Yu, played by Zhang Zi. Each of them has their own path that overlap with each other, and sadly there is a fair amount of playing through the same levels but just as a different character. Even though that sounds bad, don't worry because this game is awful from top to bottom, so you probably won't make it that far for this to be a problem. Each mission is you simply going from one area to the next, getting into a fight with the 5 to 10 enemies within that area, followed by a door unlocking once all the enemies have been defeated. This could have been absolutely fine, I'm happy to get stuck into mindless combat scenarios, but Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon takes a different approach. You have four attacks which are light and heavy melee and light and heavy weapon attacks. You can mash out the light attacks and get through each mission, however the game clearly wants you to try out its combos, special moves and blocking system. The trouble is, the game is not built to use these systems effectively. Each time you enter a new area, all enemies within that area just rush towards you and start swinging. This would be fine if you didn't have to face a character to block their attacks, so this sort of leaves you with two choices. Spam the light attacks and just get through it, or try to memorise and land complex combos while constantly getting stabbed in the back from the relentless AI. The blocking system, when it works, does make for some cool looking action as you defend yourself against a flurry of strikes, but the timing is so tight and you have to press the block button for each hit, so mistime one button press and you'll get caught in an attack which when encountering a boss character can almost kill you instantly. The combat is not fun in the slightest, even though you get to play as three different characters, even though you get to pick up a variety of weapons and even though you can actually break other people's weapons if they block too many of your attacks, the combat in this game is both boring and frustrating as it swings wildly from mind-numbingly easy to unbelievably unfair from one moment to the next. The boss battles are the main cause of these sharp difficulty spikes as they dodge almost all of your attacks with minimal effort even when backed into a corner. What doesn't help all of this is that this title features possibly one of the worst cameras I've had the misfortune of experiencing in a video game. Not only is it always positioned in an awkward angle that blocks your view, but it seems to have some sections where you can control the camera and other sections where it's fixed. I have never struggled so much with a game to see just what's in front of me. For example, take a look at this part of a mission in which my objective was to make it to the top of a cliff while boulders rolled down a hill. Yep, that's how bad the camera is. Also adding to the awfulness is the occasional but always terrible platforming. In the movie there is quite a bit of people jumping around and floating through the air while fighting, so I can understand why they wanted to throw some platforming into the mix, but again, when the camera is this bad, you'll just want to fall to your death as soon as possible. What confuses me is that while it wasn't uncommon for movie games to be a little rough due to their short and rushed development cycle, this game doesn't have that excuse. The film was released in the summer of 2000 and the game was released in the autumn of 2003, more than three years later and it still turned out worse than some games that were developed in less than 12 months. 
Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon was a beautiful movie with great direction, but the video game adaptation seems to abandon all of that in favour of vacant looking environments. In all fairness, they've clearly had to stretch things out and create areas that didn't exist in the movie, but they still chose to show zero creativity when they were given a little more freedom. The cutscenes also look so bland that it makes you wonder why they didn't just use footage from the movie, as it surely would have saved them plenty of time and money. Overall, the presentation does feel very basic, and everything from its animation to its UI, and even the menus, does give the impression of a budget title. The only positive for me is the audio. The sound effects of the punches and kicks are fine, the soundtrack is decent and is possibly borrowed from the film, and the voiceover is in Mandarin, which I suppose is better than some mediocre dub. You say? This video is already way too long for a game that is so poor, so I'll wrap this up. Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon is a game that is so bad it is baffling when considering how long it was possibly in development for. Its missions are repetitive, its combat is frustrating, and its visuals are unappealing. Every aspect of this game is below par, and it doesn't belong anywhere near your collection.